Hello and welcome to a Like Maria mini lecture on Ros Barber's poem Material. We're going to look today at some material that you could use in an essay question on this poem and I'm going to do this by picking specific elements of the poetry to talk about. Obviously there's lots more you could say about this poem but my focus today is the skills of developing and writing a response to an essay question. So our question is explore the way the poet presents the relationship between generations in material. So first of all I'm going to focus on the central image of the handkerchief and the actual material that is being discussed. Material is the title of this poem and it's always a good idea to think about the title. Sometimes it gives you a lot of um, a kind of springboard for ideas that you can develop throughout the rest of your analysis. So we have here two quotations talking about material. One is when hankies were material. The other is the scratchy and disposable. So here I'm looking at the difference, going back to our essay title, the difference in generations um, through the central image of the handkerchief and the material that it's made of. On the one hand, material hankies were soft, they were reusable, they were permanent, they lasted for years. They were used to mop the corners of your grief in a comforting, caring, nurturing role. Um, and this is set in opposition to the scratchy and disposable material of the um, paper tissues, um, suggesting a, a scratchier and a more disposable um, way of looking after your children, um, that perhaps you're not there all the time for them and you're a little bit harsh or cold with them, you simply turn the TV on rather than baking their favourite biscuits. So here we've got the suggestion um, through this imagery surrounding the material of the handkerchiefs that the previous generation that um, Barbara is looking back to here, her mother's generation, um, had more of the soft skills of parenting and that the new generation that Barbara belongs to is much more utilitarian and um, practical because they have to juggle um, the pressures of modern life and in particular for women that means work. You can see here I've written a paragraph in an essay style. Um, you might like to pause here and reflect on this for a moment um, and have a look at the way I've incorporated these ideas and the way I've written about the poetry. The next aspect of this poem that I want to look at, focusing on the difference between generations, is how the mother and daughter are spoken about in the poem. If you look at the start of stanza three, we have this very striking line, she bought her own, I never did. And it's a bluntness um, and it has a simplicity, this line, um, that really sets out the, um, the central idea of the poem, the difference between mother and daughter. Um, we have the two characters um, described in this line through their um, attitude towards handkerchiefs. Um, and they are divided here by the caesura in the line, this stop in the, mid, in the middle of the line, um, showing that they are separated. We also have the change of the focus of the poem here from the mother, she, to the voice in the poem, the daughter, I. So the pronoun um, is swapped here um, for this moment in this is very um, telling sentence. And this balance um, is continued throughout the poem in many ways. Um, the shift from the focus on the mother at the start of the poem to the daughter in the second half of the poem. Um, the daughter is mother. Um, but also um, you can trace uh, this um, difference, this opposition between the um, different types of mothers um, through phrases such as the two I've picked out. She'd have one always up her sleeve. There's never a hanky up my sleeve. Um, so here again, we've got the difference between always the permanent, the proper material, and never a, a negative 
um, building on that never from I never did, the repetition of the word there, showing that the um, daughter has this negative feeling about herself. However, we do have these two characters bound by the repetition of up her sleeve, up my sleeve. So this phrase is meant to send us back to the mother and draw a direct comparison. So they are tied together um, in some ways, considering um, the handkerchiefs and in their attitudes to handkerchiefs, but they are also separated by this. Again, I've written up a paragraph for you. Um, have a read through and think about the way these ideas are um, expressed. You might want to tinker with this and make it your own. My style is not going to be your style. Um, and I've tried to make it a, a clear, straightforward answer. Nothing too fancy, but just getting to the bones of the poem. Okay, my last um, section today is going to be looking at um, another two quotes. Um, first of all, referring to the material, but it isn't mine, I'll let it go. My mother too, eventually. It isn't mine referring to the material, but also the way of life of the old era that she has spoken about in the details of this poem. She really does go through the material aspect um, of life in an earlier generation. She talks about the um, things in the department store, the headscarves, girdle, knitting wool, um, the handkerchiefs themselves, the comma van, um, the haddock on the fishmonger's slab and the crab. So the detail, the material detail of the generation um, she belonged to as a child is gone. Um, and she's saying, I can let this go now. There is some resolution at the end of the poem. In the very last stanza, we have the mother's voice coming into the daughter's head. And this is expressed in italics. And the mother says, this is your material to do with, daughter, what you will. There is a passing over of the mantle of motherhood there. There is a recognition from the mother that... Um, you will do it your way. And the daughter has constructed this voice in her own head. And it's rather um, optimistic, comforting end here, I would suggest. Um, she says she'll let her mother go eventually. And she is reconciled to the fact here that it's now her turn to use her material. And she laughs almost, saying, my mum would say, this is your material to do with daughter what you will. Um, and she would scold me for complaining about the scratchy and um, disposable. Um, the mother would say um, in quite an assertive voice, don't be complaining about this. Make the most of your life and what I have given you and what you have got, the material um, existence, the material generation that you are in. Here again, you might want to pause. Here is a suggestion for how you might put this into written English um, and collect your ideas. I suggest now that you go off and pick another um, point from the poem and some other quotations and evidence and try and work up um, an example on your own that will answer this essay um, about the difference in generations. So I hope today that you've found out how to solve a problem like essay writing on Ros Barber's material.